Welcome back to the lead. The breaking news this afternoon, the vice president-elect Mike Pence now in charge of the Trump transition, replacing New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. This move comes after news that President-elect Trump is considering his campaign CEO Steve Bannon for one of the most important jobs in Washington, White House Chief of Staff. Today, CNN learned that in their meetings with President-elect Trump yesterday, both Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and House Speaker Paul Ryan told Trump that they thought RNC Chair Reince Priebus would be the right choice and best fit for Chief of Staff. Now, some sources are suggesting that Priebus still seems to have the inside track on the Chief of Staff job. But either way, Steve Bannon seems to be headed to a senior role at the White House, and that has many Americans, including many Republicans in Washington, quite nervous. As one of the few who took Donald Trump's presidential potential seriously before almost anyone else, and as an architect of Trump's take-no-prisoner strategy, Steve Bannon is the man that Trump's gut tells him should be the White House chief of staff, and if not that, then at least a senior advisor at the White House, sources tell CNN. But it's a prospect that gives many Americans, not to mention Washington Republicans, severe heartburn. Do you have a match somewhere so that I could set my hair on fire? Steve Bannon came to the Trump campaign from Breitbart News, a bomb-throwing site favored by the so-called alt-right, a mixture of conservatives and populists, white supremacists and anti-Semites, a news outlet that gave Trump favorable coverage. Bannon's appointment to the Trump campaign immediately raised flags at the Southern Poverty Law Center. I don't think people realize just how far outside of the mainstream some of the ideas are that uh, the Breitbart website under Mr. Bannon has promoted. It's been racist, it's been homophobic, it's been anti-immigrant. Many establishment Republicans found themselves agreeing with Hillary Clinton when she took on Bannon and Breitbart in August. Here are a few headlines they've published, and I'm not making this up. Birth control makes women unattractive and crazy. Would you rather your child had feminism or cancer? Gabby Giffords, the gun control movement's human shield. Another problem in terms of day-to-day -day governing is that Bannon and Breitbart have a long record of taking on establishment Republicans, whom Bannon felt betrayed the conservative cause. We don't really believe there is a functional conservative party in this country. We certainly don't think the Republican Party is that. One prime target, House Speaker Paul Ryan whom Bannon once complained was, quote, rubbing his social justice Catholicism in my nose every second. Weeks after Paul Ryan had been named Speaker of the House, according to a leaked email published by The Hill, Bannon said that he had plans for the Republican, quote, long game is him gone by spring. What we need to do is bitch slap the Republican Party and get those guys, you know, heaving too. And, and, and if we have to, we'll take it over. Bannon guided Trump to take his campaign and American politics into places that establishment Republicans found uncomfortable. He was a major force behind Trump's decision to appear this fall with women who had accused Bill Clinton of sexual assault, regardless of Trump's own vulnerabilities on that issue and that Access Hollywood tape that had come out just days before. Grab him by the pussy. For Trump, a candidate who dispensed with many of the political, not to mention general societal niceties, and you can tell them to go themselves. Bannon was a good fit. In 2007, Bannon's ex-wife accused him of making anti-Semitic remarks, trying to keep his daughters from attending a school with a sizable Jewish population. Quote, he said he doesn't like Jews and that he doesn't like that they raise their kids to be whiny brats, his wife said in a court document. Steve Bannon has denied those charges. I know he enjoys a a very strong relationship with his ex-wife. Bannon created a home for white supremacy, white nationalism online. And the danger now, of course, is that he's going to provide a home for it in the White House. A Bannon pick would speak to the way Trump intends to govern and interact with party leaders and political opponents in Washington. And they saw the movement of the people rising up against the government really before anyone. So if he chooses Steve Bannon, it's...